Hi, welcome to Chemistry 3006, the hydrosphere. I'm going to talk now about a simple way to find out graphically the concentration of a number of species in solution using the log concentration plot method. So let's just have a look at how that works first. Um, I'm going to teach you how to do it and then later on I'm going to explain to you how it works. Okay, so we're going to take our usual example of a weak monoprotic acid uh, in solution and we're going to see how uh, the, the amount of that monoprotic acid and its conjugate base changes with pH. So uh, you have to go through a number of steps. Uh, in this example we're going to take a weak monoprotic acid concentration 10 to the minus 2 molar pKa 6.2. Step 1, uh, we draw the hydrogen ion concentrations and OH minus concentrations as a function of pH. And this is shown on this diagram here at the top on the right. Uh, you can see that at uh, pH 0 the concentration is 10 to the minus 0 concentration is on a log scale here because this is a log concentration on the vertical axis. So as we go down here this is concentration 10 to the minus 1, 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 3. So this is getting logarithmically smaller in concentration uh, as the pH goes from 0 up to 14. So for example at pH 7 uh, the concentration is 10 to the minus 7 over here. Uh, these are negative numbers down here and likewise uh, here we have the OH concentration gradually increasing in powers of 10 as the pH goes from 0 to 14. Uh, the H plus and OH minus concentrations are the same at pH 7 so they intersect there. That's step one, very easy. These lines have slope negative 1 and positive 1 respectively which means to say that you go across one unit and up unit one unit for the OH line and you go across one unit and down one unit to draw the H plus line here, slope minus one. Step two, and these are used as guidelines. These are the guidelines that we're going to use. Uh, step two is we draw a vertical line at the pKa, 6.2 in this case, in this example. So here's 6.2, we draw this vertical orange line here as another guideline. Uh, and we uh, draw a horizontal line at the log of the concentration of the monoprotic acid that we're interested in. In this case the concentration is 10 to 2 times 10 to the minus 3 so the log of that is well nearly negative 3 it's actually a bit uh, larger than that negative 2.7 and so we draw a line here at negative 2.7 across and that represents the concentration line for the species, the total concentration of the acid, the weak acid in the solution. Uh, next we draw an inverted V. Uh, this is the inverted V of slope positive 1 and negative 1. So the positive 1 line is parallel to the OH line and the mi minus 1 line is parallel to the H plus line. Now uh, you're probably wondering, well yeah, all that's fine. But what's this got to do with the concentration of the actual species in solution? This is where we do it right now in step three. We draw the concentrations of the HA lines. And what we do is uh, initially we draw the concentration of the undissociated acid at low pH. And that is following very closely, essentially exactly, the concentration line of the acid until uh, it gets... Uh, close to the pKa vertical line at which point at which point this line drops 0.3 units 0.3 units here onto the vertical line and then we draw a line of slope negative 1 so we follow the concentration line we, until we get to this vertical line we drop 0.3 units and we drop and then we start drawing a line of slope minus one. This represents the concentration line of HA. That's it. That's how you draw the log concentration plot for that. And the other species of interest is the conjugate uh, base, which is A minus. 
It's the reverse process. We follow the first part of the inverted V, slope positive 1, all the way up to 0.3 units underneath uh, the concentration line here. Here's the concentrate. Go, go down 0.3 units and then draw this horizontal line and then curve it up towards the log concentration line. And that represents the initially very low concentration of the conjugate base in acidic conditions until we reach uh, pKa where HA and the conjugate base are at equal concentrations and then subsequently the A- minus conjugate base becomes dominant and the acid decreases, the pH goes down. That's it. Now uh, let's look at the case of a diprotic acid, how to do that. In this case, 5 times 10 to the molar with pKa1 4.5, pKa2 8.9. We go through the same process. Uh, we take, uh, we draw vertical, we draw the H plus and OH lines. Well, perhaps we don't really need to do that. We, we certainly need to be able to draw lines of slope plus 1 and minus 1. We draw the vertical lines at the pKa1 and pKa2, 4.5 in this case and pKa2 at 8.9. We draw the inverted Vs here in orange and here in green. And then we start drawing the concentration lines. The concentration lines are drawn in the second part here. Uh, first, the concentration line for H2B, the biprotic acid, diprotic acid. Uh, this is concentration uh, log uh, log concentration minus 2.3 which is actually the log of 0 0.05 so at low pH we have a concentration of that and then when it gets close to the pKa one line that drops by 0.3 units and then it goes slope minus 1 along this V this uh, inverted V until it reaches pKa2 and then it drops another 0.3 units and then it starts going with slope minus 2. So here we have slope minus 1, here we have a sharper slope minus 2, that means we go down 2 units across 1. And that, in, that my friends, is the concentration of the H2B line. Uh, by, con by contrast, we have now the conjugate base, first conjugate base of H2B, it's HB minus. That follows the first part of the HB line, actually slightly below that line, because it has to intersect the pKa1 line at 0.3 units just below that. It's, it looks like it's intersecting exactly at that unit, but it actually should be negative 2.6 there. So maybe this graph is a little bit incorrect. Uh, until it goes up to the concentration Hb- minus in this range between uh, pKa1 and pKo2, and then it drops 0.3 units at the pKa2 line and then we have a slope of negative 1 parallel to the H plus concentration line. So that is the concentration of Hb minus. And finally the concentration of B minus, we starting from the right hand side this time we come at the constant because at high pH we have only the conjugate base. It's a very basic solution, all the hydrogens have been removed. Until we get to pKa2, adding more acid, 0.3 units down, slope minus 1, until it heats, hits the pKa1 line, 0.3 units down, and slope minus 2. So that means we have to go down 2 units and across 1 unit. It's a little bit tricky to draw that. That's why uh, in the case of these slope 1 lines and minus 1 lines, it's good to have the guidelines for H plus and H minus. By the time you're down here at very low concentrations, no one really cares too much about this kind of concentration down here so it doesn't matter if you get these parts of the graph done properly. People are more interested in these regions here around the pKa uh, values and the values uh, at the total concentration. Look, you can extend this method to a triprotic, quadriprotic acid, it's the same. This is a very simple way of making those plots and they're surprisingly accurate. See you later.